Hello, I'd like to welcome everybody to the second episode of Veterans Talk. Today we have Dean Rangard here with us from the National Cemetery, and we're going to go over some things about the National Cemetery that I think will be very interesting to some people. Dean, how about your trip up to, um, where did you say you had to take your daughter? I had to take my daughter to her new duty station in Colorado Springs, Colorado. She's been in the Air Force for six years now. Mm -hmm. And you know, Randy, I found something interesting along the way. The Department of Agriculture was stopping trucks that had round hay bales on them and arresting the truck drivers. Why were they doing that for? Because the Department of Agriculture said that the livestock wasn't getting a square meal. <laughs> well, anyway, let's get back to this. And more, first of all, I'd like to thank Francis Marin for doing these segments for us. The, if anyone had a chance to see the last one on um, FlorenceCountyVeteranAffairs.com, it is outstanding. They did a very good job on that, and thank you very much. Dean, how long has the National Cemetery been there? Uh, Florence National Cemetery was established in 1865. Uh, President Lincoln wanted a memorial place for all the war dead, so Florence National Cemetery was established then. And eight, what year was that? 1865. 1865. All right, how did Florence come about getting it? Uh, Florence National Cemetery basically was uh, put in that position because of the Florence Stockade. And I'll give you a little history behind the Florence Stockade. Mm. During the Civil War, uh, when uh, General Sherman was marching south. He was going through Atlanta and down through Georgia. Well, the Confederate uh, prisoner of war camp was in Andersonville, Georgia. The Confederates didn't want all those Union prisoners repatriated with the uh, Union Army, so they moved them to different places before Sherman's uh, troops could uh, repatriatize re uh, them. One of the reasons that they picked Florence was, or one of the other places, was because they still had rail lines that could be utilized to move the uh, Union soldiers out of Andersonville. They, they uh, basically trained uh, up to 15,000 prisoners to Florence. Into, they herded them into a field and built a uh, stockade there similar to the one in Andersonville and it was guarded by uh, uh, some U uh, Confederate soldiers and some militia people in the Florence area. It was only open for less than five months and over 2,300 uh, Union prisoners perished based on their treatment at Andersonville. Because of their uh, uh, deaths at Florence Stockade, uh, they didn't want to bury him right next to the stockade, so a plantation owner named Jarrett, who owned the property where Florence Cemetery is at, offered up some of his property, and it was better uh, soil conditions for digging graves there. So they buried the over 2,300 prisoners from the Florence stockade in trenches at uh, the f current Florence site, and that's why Florence National Cemetery was actually established there because they had already buried over 2,300. And they died, a lot of them, from malaria and stuff, wasn't it? Um, during the wartime, there wasn't much food, especially when the North was cutting off the South for a lot of the supplies and food. And the, it takes a lot of food and uh, logistic work to run an army on both sides. But they, uh, they didn't have much food in Andersonville, so a lot of the prisoners came to Florence and other areas that were uh, very malnourished and uh, in need of medical treatment. Yeah. Well, I knew I grew up on National Cemetery Road, and I would assume back during that time, the, that area was, a, was an open area. It wasn't like it is now because I know right off of National Cemetery Road down on Jeffreys Creek down there, if you go down there, you'll see a lot of the, you'll think you're at the creek, but you're not. There's actually a lot of ditches dug through there where they had rice fields back then. There was a lot of rice plantations up and down through there, so that was an open area through there. Um, are, there are there any notable berries out, burials out at the National Cemetery? Uh, yes, there are. Um, because it's been there for a long time, 1865 up till now, there's been a lot of... Uh, uh, different conflicts. When they first made the cemetery, they didn't know it was going to have so many wars or conflicts after that. 
But we have uh, Civil War burials there, both north, uh, um, north and well, not the north and south. Florence National Cemetery was basically uh, labeled as a uh, Union cemetery based on the burials from the stockade. So, mm -hmm. believe it or not, Florence National Cemetery does not have any Confederate burials in it. We have one Confederate headstone, which you can tell the difference by uh, during that timeline, the Confederate headstones had a pointed top mm -hmm. and the regular headstones had a half moon shaped top. Mm. Um, but the notable burials there, we have uh, normally when you look at the headstone, uh, the earliest versions of headstones would have uh, USA on them, standing for US Army based on they didn't have a Navy, a Marine Corps, a Coast Guard. It was just all U.S. Army. A lot of the soldiers that went into the Union Army were already in the service, uh, and they were taking care of the Indian Wars out west, so then they just moved east and got into the Civil War. Um, we have USCT on some of our headstones, which I ask people when they come to visit, uh, that's USA for U.S. Army. What's USCT stand for? And they sometimes give me the answer of U.S. Confederate Troop. Well, in actuality, it's U.S. Colored Troops because Union uh, Army uh, solicited to the black uh, community to get soldiers in. Um, we also have uh, a lady who's reportedly the first lady to be buried in the National Cemetery. Her name is Florina Budwin, and her story is when her husband went off to war, she followed him by way of putting on a blue uniform also. Her husband was killed in an action throughout the country. She was captured. She ended up at Florence Stockade and got sick, as many of the uh, prisoners did. Uh, they took her to the infirmary where they discovered she was a woman and they <laughs> moved her out of the infirmary. She stayed at the, at the uh, stockade till she got better helping other service people. Uh, in addition to that, she got sick again while she was helping other uh, prisoners and she actually died in 1865. So her tombstone is in the middle of the trench burials at Florence Cemetery. Uh, we also have a one Medal of Honor winner, which uh, came from your service, the Navy. Uh, he was in during Korea and Vietnam, and uh, he won his Medal of Honor uh, riding in a riverboat, participating in uh, uh, functions during the Vietnam era. Okay. Who can be buried out at the cemetery there? Um, basically, all veterans can be buried at the National Cemetery if they meet the criteria. Uh, the criteria right now is enlisted people uh, who were in the service before September of 1980. Uh, there's a date there. I think it's September 7th, 1980, but don't quote me on that. Uh, Any time during before that, you can be buried in the National Cemetery if you've had any discharge other than dishonorable. Um, in addition to that, uh, officers who were on active duty before 1981, I think it's October, but don't quote me on that either. If you need, I don't have all the d data with me. Um, and then anybody beyond that had to have served 24 consecutive months in order to be buried at the National Cemetery. Um, but if you have any questions, just uh, call the cemetery. We do case by case, first come, uh, first serve, and do uh, uh, at the time of need. Um, what do people have to do to be buried there? What do they need to bring? Do they need to bring you something, or do they go through the funeral home? What do they need to do? Uh, that's a good question. Um, what we try to encourage is we try to encourage family members, because we get a lot of uh, servicemen and their spouses coming into the cemetery just to do some pre-planning. What we always advise is make sure the husband and the wife or the loved ones, if one of those has already passed, know where the information is that's needed to uh, make eligibility 
to be buried in the National Cemetery, which is a discharge. In some cases, uh, we can look in the records that the VA has uh, if they've been seen medically by the VA. We can sometimes use that as well. Okay. Well, once arrangements are, have been made to be buried there, what happens then? Um, basically, uh, once the, uh, there's an application process, once you've shown your military discharge papers, uh, the application process is done by the scheduling office that is a national, national scheduling office, which is located in St. Louis, Missouri, mm -hmm which they have about 50 agents that work there and they take applications for burial at uh, one of the 131 national cemeteries across the country. Mm -hmm. um, the reason it's located there, I believe, is there's the National Personnel Records Office is in the same town, which kind of makes sense because if you ever needed to find out eligibility or look at somebody's service record, that building is loaded with everybody's uh, documentation. Uh, basically, once they've made the application and the uh, families have scheduled their uh, burial, um, with a casketed burial, you must use a funeral home mm -hmm. to have them call the National Scheduling Office. If it's a cremation burial, uh, sometimes you can call the cemetery, but you can call the cemetery at any time to get some further instructions. Uh, basically, what happens is the uh, application is done, the family decides on a service date, uh, we set up a committal, uh, we have six timelines during the day, starting at 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11, 12, 1, and 2, mm -hmm. and uh, those are the service times. Once the people and the family members arrive for the committal s service, we have a committal shelter that's on our expansion side of the cemetery. And basically it's an open structure with a roof that uh, accommodates the remains and the immediate family members sitting on benches. Uh, and it's up to the family if they want to have uh, military honors. But our cemetery uh, does military honors for all veterans. So uh, the funeral homes around here know to make sure that that happens. It, and services last uh, between five and 10 minutes. Some go as long as 30, but uh, we try to encourage folks to stay within their 15 to 20 minute timeline based on the committal service is a final farewell to the veteran or loved one. Okay, now um, for one of the things I know they have to have is the 214. And for that, they either come to me or they can go to the records department, the courthouse, and get that. Um, but can't the wives and children, can't some children be buried in the cemetery? Yes. Um, any military uh, dependent right. um, can be buried in the National Cemetery uh, up to the age of 21. Right. They have to be uh, never married. Um, and it go, the age bracket goes to 23 if the dependent is furthering their education at a uh, college uh, established institution. Okay. Well, what kind of activities do the, other than the burials do they have there at the Florence National Cemetery? Um, we we kind of have three or four events during the, during the year. Our first one is, uh, and I'm, I'm just going to use this as a, I'm thinking to the months, but in, uh, in May, we have a Memorial Day program that goes on Monday, Memorial Day at 10 a.m. each year. Uh, but, but prior to the Memorial Day service, we do what we call uh, Flag Placement Day, which goes the Saturday prior to Memorial Day. What that consists of is volunteers, especially Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, and their uh, adult, sometimes uh, siblings and or parents and veterans and uh, other, other groups in the area, they migrate to the cemetery for uh, flag placement day and the cemetery staff, uh, myself included, I give a brief, uh, safety brief, because we got to use two parts, we got to go across the street and we, uh, 
uh, make a note to tell everybody not to cross the street by themselves so we go out there and make it work work good uh, that takes about an hour and a half to get the flags in for uh, close to 9500 grave sites mm -hmm. that's a lot it that is a lot we we also have one other event it's called Reese Cross America right. and what that is is it's an annual event that is held at every uh, national cemetery to include Arlington um, what it is, is it's a uh, family sponsorship, corporate sponsorship. What they're trying to do is, it was all established at Arlington, where they put uh, wreaths at every gravesite in Arlington. Somebody got the idea that that would be a great nationwide uh, program, so they pushed to do all the uh, national cemeteries. So now each year, the first or second week in December, we have a Reese Cross America Day where all the wreaths that people sponsored throughout the year are brought to the cemetery via uh, trailers, trucks, and they're escorted by the uh, Patriot Riders and uh, Rolling Thunder, which in our case here at Florence, it's a community event and uh, everybody likes showing up. Okay. Well, what, what's your hours of operation there? Um, our business hours are 8 to 4.30 on weekdays. But the cemetery is open uh, 24 hours a day, but we recommend that people come to the cemetery uh, from dawn to dusk because I can't control stuff there after hours. And um, if I wanted to find an individual grave site, how would I go about doing that? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, the cemetery is on uh, two different parcels of land. The first part has been there since 1865, and the other side, the expansion side, has been there since the late 70s, early 80s, each side has a what we call gravesite locator. The one on the historic side is still a paper copy. The one on the expansion side is a touch screen uh, gravesite locator. All you need to know is the last name, first name, and in some cases, because of a name being very common, you might need to uh, know a death date or a birth date. Okay. And... Who works at the National Cemetery? Um, everybody that works at Florence National Cemetery is a veteran. Mm -hmm. um, and we look at it as veterans taking care of veterans. Uh, part of our uh, being in the military helps us and under, makes us understand the uh, taking care of veterans is a very important process. Well, Dean, I'd like to thank you very much for your time today. I know you're a very busy man out there. Um, once again, if you have any, want to know any more information from Dean there, you can reach him at 843-669-8783, correct? That's correct. And today for mail call, what we're going to do is I'm going to bring out an exclusive. Um, we have the first showing of the World War II monument that's going to be at the Veterans Park. Um, the monument is something a little different than normal than what you would see. Um, they were looking for a concept definitely that was different, something that whenever you looked at it you'd go home and remember. So I hope everyone likes it. Um, other than that, thank you very much for today's show and for all the shows and any information to do with veterans. Once again, you can go to Florence County Veteran Affairs dot com and you can see this show and other shows that we've done thank you very much